Today we talk about one of the most dangerous and most infamous outlaw motorcycle club members to ever wear that 1% diamond. And we're talking about Harry Taco Bowman, the epitome of an outlaw, the undisputed leader of the Outlaws MC. Today we're going to explore his tale of defiance, brotherhood, and unyielding war against his arch nemesis, the Hells Angels, where the name Harry Taco Bowman rings bells through the thunderous roar of engines and the rebellious haze. In the world of motorcycle clubs, he stood as a giant among men. His passion for the biker lifestyle and his embodiment of what it truly meant to be a club member was unparalleled. As we navigate through this story, bear witness to the relentless battles fought and the unwavering commitment that defined Harry Taco Bowman. Let's get into it. Harry Joseph Bowman hailed from the tiny town of Marysville, Michigan, with a population barely tipping 9,000. The early chapters of his life remain veiled in mystery, but Taco, as he became to be known, carved his legend in the gritty streets of Detroit. In this urban landscape, the outlaws specialized in the unique combination of managing strippers and collecting debts for the mob. A true legend, Taco One Percenter breathed life into the mighty black and white nation of the Outlaws MC. Under Taco One Percenter's reign, the Outlaws MC experienced unprecedented growth. Etching his name into the annals of the American Outlaws Association as a living legend. For 17 years, the leader was none other than Harry Bowman, known to all as Taco. He ascended to the esteemed position of the first international president of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club steering one of the world's largest and most esteemed clubs but what sets taco one percent apart as a legend it was his underlying strength and resilience in the face of adversity a true outlaws outlaw he remained true to the principles that defined him: biking and brotherhood these weren't just buzzwords they were the very bedrock of the outlaws motorcycle club a legacy that took root in 1935 at Matilda's Bar on Old Route 66 in McCook, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Taco One Percenter elevated biking and brotherhood to unparalleled heights. However, the FBI painted a different picture, branding him a gangster, placing him amongst the notorious ranks of their exclusive club, the 10 Most Wanted. Bowman faced indictments for murder, attempted murder, and a litany of violent racketeering acts kidnapping, extortion, firebombing, and drug dealing, all executed in the name of his outlaw nation. As the law enforcement lens widened, motorcycle clubs were no longer mere clubs in the eyes of police. They were evolving into organized crime syndicates. The once free-willing brotherhoods were now labeled as a mob on wheels. In a shadowy world of the outlaws MC, a former member named Mike Lynn made a deal with the law venturing into the lion's den while shrouded in anonymity. He took the rogue path, risking life and limb to ensure that Harry Bowman paid the price. A man once embraced as a brother, now found himself a wanted outcast among those he had once called kin. Mike Lynn's journey into the brotherhood began in 1993 when he earned this patch, a symbol of loyalty that would later be betrayed. In this club, membership isn't granted, it's earned through grit and loyalty. As a fledging outlaw, Mike Lynn's initiation task was to stand guard the ultimate outlaw president, Bowman, during bike week. But after some time, the accusation of kidnapping hung over Taco, stemming from an incident where a friend of an outlaw who had punched a member during bike week was captured and unceremoniously thrown off a third floor hotel balcony. Beyond the tales of Bowman's reputation, impulsive nature and drug habits, a peculiar distinction set the leader apart from the pack. 
his eccentric little shaved mustache that lent him an almost Mexican appearance. By the time Taco set his sights on Daytona and Bike Week, his notoriety preceded him. He had clashed with the mafia, defied the federal government, made an example of a suspected snitch, and vowed to take on the Outlaws MC's most despised adversaries, the Hells Angels. Each life claim merely added another patch to the jacket of an outlaw in the sun-soaked landscapes of South Florida. Mike Glenn and his brush with Taco and the Outlaws Motorcycle Club never proved itself worthy of the lightning bolts that adorned the club's insignia. Escaping with his life, he bore witness to a war between the Outlaws and the Hells Angels, a conflict rooted in territorial disputes and a twisted quest for prestige, akin to a schoolyard brawl between bullies taken to the stream. The Outlaws vs. The Hells Angels The feud between the Outlaws Motorcycle Club and the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is one of the most notorious and enduring in the history of Outlaw Motorcycle Clubs. For over half a century, these two factions have locked horns in a bitter struggle for dominance, a narrative etched in violence and bloodshed. The roots of this rivalry extended back to the early 1960s as the Midwestern Outlaws expanded their turf to a firmly established northeastern territory of the Hells Angels. Turf wars, drug trafficking disputes, and criminal endeavors became the breeding ground for their animosity. The late 1960s and early 1970s witnessed the escalation of this rivalry into a full-fledged war marked by brutal acts of violence and intimidation. The dark chapter unfolded in 1969 when a cadre of outlaws attacked the Hells Angels clubhouse in upstate New York leaving three dead and several injured. Throughout the subsequent decades, the battle for supremacy continued unabated. Drug routes, territorial control, and the respect of fellow outlaw motorcycle clubs were all contested fiercely. The violence persisted, claiming numerous lives in a torrent of fights, ambushes, and bombings. By the 1980s, the law enforcement hammer fell on both clubs, invoking RICO statutes to prosecute their enterprises. Dozens of members found themselves behind bars, leaders included. The early 1990s brought a fragile truce between the warring factions, momentarily quelling the overt violence. However, simmering tensions persisted beneath the surface, occasionally erupting into sporadic outbreaks of violence. The bitter rivalry between the Outlaws and the Hells Angels remains a monumental chapter in Outlaw Motorcycle Club history. In the realm of outlaw business, a man held the reins for 17 years, determined to elevate his club to the level of menace synonymous with this rival, Sonny Barger of the Hells Angels. Even within his own ranks, like the enforcer Donald Fogg, an outlaw found his life cut short under suspicious circumstances. Accused of being a snitch, Fogg met his end, with Bowman orchestrating the funeral, a grim testament to the president's godlike authority. While the Hells Angels traced their origins back to the Hollister Riot, proudly asserting their presence in 1935, the modern-day outlaws emerged on Chicago's South Side post-World War II. A decade after Hollister, they found their identity on the silver screen. The Hells Angels, the pioneers of the 1% Club, claimed the east of the Mississippi as their domain. The class of these giants unfolds in the pages of history tale of leather-clad legacies, blood, and the pursuit of outlaw immortality. When the FBI, nosing around some illicit gambling operations, sought to engage him, Taco didn't flinch. Instead, he mounted his ride, surrounded by his bodyguards, staking his claim as one of the largest motorcycle rallies in the nation, the Daytona Bike Rally. This coastal haven held paramount significance for the outlaws, particularly in their ongoing feud with the Hells Angels. The Daytona Bike Week, with an average attendance of around 500,000, stood as arguably one of the world's grandest motorcycle rallies. In Bowman's eyes, if he was to bring his club to par with the Hells Angels, Daytona had to be conquered. Taco waged a relentless war against the Hells Angels, declaring we're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. His rallying cry resonated among the outlaws, hungry for a leader to take them into battle. This wasn't just a clash of clubs. It was a call to arms, a quest for supremacy, and Taco, with the Outlaws at his back, was ready to lead the charge. In the 90s, the Outlaws rolled into Daytona, their colors spotted by everyone, 
laying claim to the city, a move that sent shockwaves through rival clubs. But Taco Bowman, the international president of the Outlaws Motorcycle Club, this was no mere territorial acquisition. It was a strategic master stroke. His eyes were set on challenging the preeminence of the most renowned motorcycle club globally, the infamous Hells Angels. If they had Sturgis, Taco aimed for the crown jewel, Daytona's Bike Week. On the historic 50th anniversary of Bike Week, the Outlaws made their move, establishing a clubhouse right off Main Street. This audacious power play not only asserted their presence, but also garnered federal recognition for the Outlaws. In response, the Warlocks, sworn enemies of the Outlaws, infiltrated South Florida, peddling drugs and allegiance with the Hells Angels. Taco's decree echoed loud and clear. Florida was now outlaw territory. And he etched those words on the bottom of their patch. The outlaws didn't just claim the turf. They have claimed the very word Florida as their exclusive domain. In a chilling episode on October 18th, 1994, members of the Daytona Beach chapter of the Atlas Motorcycle Club orchestrated a bomb attack on a Breaver County club affiliated with the outlaws with a five gallon jerry filled with gas, a PVC pipe, packed with black powder. A lethal concoction was hurled through a window, reducing the clubhouse to ashes. Luckily, no lives were lost, but the flames of animosity soared. Accused of planning attacks and charged with taking a warlock's life in the name of his club, Taco Bowman gathered his outlaw crew after a national run in 1994. He straightforwardly urged his brothers to toughen up. Daytona, Florida now became the main battleground in what Bowman saw as a global campaign. The story unfolding with unwavering determination and rugged resolve. In the aftermath of a nationwide clash with the outlaws' arch rivals in December 94, a brutal turf war erupted, claiming the lives of two individuals and leaving four others injured. The casualties included both outlaws and angels, illustrating the intensity of the conflict. Harry Bowman, known for his strict adherence to the rules, was disturbed when he stumbled upon a newspaper photo showing one of the club members hugging a Hells Angel. In response, he orchestrated a cunning trap, inviting them to a party. Once there, they were mercilessly beaten, stripped of their patches, and warned of dire consequences if they ever set foot in Florida again. As tensions escalated, authorities decided to take action against the outlaws. Despite Harry Taco Bowman being conspicuously absent, the Brotherhood began to unravel. By 1997, a mass evidence and witness testimonies paved the way to target the ultimate outlaw. In March 1998, Taco Bowman found himself on the FBI's notorious top 10 most wanted list, marking the end of an era. His indictment in Tampa, Florida on charges of murder and racketeering highlighted the U.S. government's determined pursuit of the infamous outlaw. Yet, even with the odds stacked against him, the elusive Taco Bowman, the most renowned outlaw in the nation, managed to evade capture. During his tenure as president, Harry Taco Bowman crafted an intricate global network of potential hideouts, expanding the outlaw's reach to unexpected corners like Thailand, Malaysia, Japan. While speculation swirled about him lurking in European countries like England or Germany, the reality was that he eluded authorities by choosing to hide in plain sight eventually tracked down to a residence in Sterling Heights, Michigan, and federal agents arrested him without incident. Bowman was then extradited to Florida, where he faced trial. In 2001, he was convicted on all charges, earning himself two life sentences, plus an additional 83 years behind bars. Even from prison, Harry Taco Bowman maintained a formidable grip over the Outlaws Motorcycle Club. He orchestrated club affairs by communicating with members through a network of informants proxies. Reports surfaced of him orchestrating illicit activities from within prison walls, including drug trafficking and steering criminal enterprises. Bowman's continued sway over the outlaws while incarcerated rested on his reputation as a relentless and feared leader. His ability to instill loyalty and obedience within the club meant that his commands would typically follow without question. Furthermore, his extensive contacts in the criminal underworld provided him with resources and support. But as time passed, Bowman's influence began to wane. Younger members ascending the ranks challenged his authority, seeking to establish their own control. Bowman's age, declining health, and limited direct communication further weakened his hold on power. By the time of his passing on March 3, 2009, 
2019, Bowman had evolved into a symbolic figure within the Outlaws. The Outlaws navigated a new era shaped by the echoes of Taco's past authority rather than his present directors. As a throttle of history roars, we close this chapter on the legendary Harry Taco Bowman and the Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Taco, a symbol of defiance and the untamed spirit of the Outlaws, etched his legacy in the asphalt of the culture. Remember, it's not just about the man, it's about the thundering engines, the brotherhood, and the unbroken spirit of the open road. As the sun sets, let the echoes of rebellion and loyalty linger. Ride on, brothers, in the spirit of the outlaws. So I hope you enjoyed that. Harry Taco Bowman, one of the legends, rest in peace, one of the like Mount Rushmore of the culture. Let me know in the comments other people that you want to hear stories on and documentaries on. And if you want to support us, you know we're demonetized. You can get your Ghost of Ellie mask now. They're on www.demonsroad.com. We got the ghost of hats, all that. I got another video where I sit down with the former national president of the Mongols MC to be linked above. And thank you for tuning in to Demons Road TV, the holy grail of MC culture. Like, subscribe, and comment. No, yeah, we ghosting, baby.